Hello there, Esteban here with All American Print Supply, and congratulations on your all new STS DTF Auto Powder Shaker Dryer Combo. In today's video, we're going to be taking you through a basic installation, setup, get you guys up and running with your new printer. You guys ready to get started? Let's do it. So the very first thing you want to do is unbox and remove all the equipment pieces out of the packaging and build our stand. The printer is not too heavy, but you're definitely going to need two sets of arms to safely lift and position it onto the stand. There's going to be four rubber stoppers, little feet underneath the printer, and they have little designated marking areas. So let's show you how we're going to load this on. After you've positioned the printer onto the stand with the four rubber feet and the designated marking areas, you're going to take these two silver screws and underneath the stand will be a marked hole so you can fasten this in actually into the printer and keep it nice and secure. These screws can be fastened by hand, no tools required. After we've got the printer out of the box and secured safely onto the stand, we're going to go ahead and get our ink separate and ready. We're going to be addressing that in a later step. There's going to be two parts. There's going to be the adapter that will go physically into the printer and then the ink bag itself. Also, there's going to be a card with a chip that is very important to correspond to that particular ink. That's going to let the printer know what ink is firing in what station. And when we're loading the ink, I want to show you guys really quick, there's a handy reference guide right here showing where this orange portion should engage. Basically that orange lever needs to be on the top of this as shown in the graphic. So when you're loading, you're going to lower this to open up the teeth inside that will allow the bag to enter the adapter. And then I'm just bringing this in so that the orange sits on top of the plastic as shown in the diagram. If the orange is not on top, the ink will not properly install. After we've properly installed the bulk ink bag into the adapter, it's time to load the chip. Now because this portion is going to be physically entering the printer first, we're going to want to make sure we have the chip aligned on that side, like so. There's going to be a few different ink configuration options available for your STS Muto DTF printer. It's going to be CMYK, CMYKWW, and CMYKW fluorescent, fluorescent ink coming soon. Next is going to be to connect the printer to your computer, PC only. Now because the machine has no printer USB port, it's going to be Ethernet, which is fine, Ethernet's better. After you've connected the printer via Ethernet to your computer, it's time to go ahead and head over to the Muto website and register the printer. While you're there, make sure you also download the MSM, it's going to be the dashboard of source for controlling the printer. Once you've done this, this will send the download link for the FlexiSign software to your email so you can get that to operate the machine. Now the first thing we're going to look at is the MSM. Here we're going to see the printer list. Let's click on our device. And if it processes, it should show green for success or red if it cannot connect. The list is going to show the status information. And that's all we're going to do on that screen. The remote panel is what we use everything for. So first, we're going to turn the machine on and go to the screen. And then we're going to go to printer control we're going to run nozzle check B. Do not do regular nozzle check. Once clicked, it will say nozzle check B has started. And if it looks good, we can start printing. If not, we can use one of the cleaning options below, ranging from normal, short, or long, depending how our nozzle check was. Let's go into media settings. We're going to click initialize, and this is going to auto register your media for you. Now we can go back to printer status. This is going to show us our ink levels. The waste ink is on the lower right. Let's keep an eye on it. And when it gets full, you must manually clear it. The other information part is the heater info. You always want to make sure this is on doing direct to film. If it's not on, the ink will start to drip. The only other feature is the media cut. In the Flexi software, we're going to go to the top left, we're going to hit job, and then we're going to hit add job. Notice we have all these jobs sent. The hold queue is completed. The output queue is what's printing now. When ripping, we'll show the percentage of the rip so we can follow its progress and send the job when it's good. With STS, there's different modes or environments, 360 by 1080, 720 by 720, and 720 by 1400. Click the highest resolution. Add job select artwork. Once in holding, we'll bring it up to perform the job and click it. And that's gonna bring up the window. You can click on the menu for environments. This is a pre-made layout so that everything will already be mirrored as we can see in our preview. The only thing you're gonna do is enter the job size and quantity. Here we're entering 20 to prepare 20 transfers. Print options. Weaving effect should be defaulted to fine and fuzz, six. That's how the printer applies the ink to the film. 
that's going to be our default setting. We can also change the temperature of the printer here as well and preview our work. Once it looks good, go ahead and press send and we'll begin ripping. Once done ripping, we'll be sent to output and can start printing. After you've gone ahead and connected the printer via Ethernet, downloaded the MSM and the FlexiSign, it's time to start connecting the printer. So after you open the MSM, you'll see your machine, the VJ628D, and then we're gonna go ahead and follow the on-screen instructions for the ink charge. It'll prompt you when to load each individual cartridge or bulk ink bag adapter, and just follow the on-screen prompts as outlined. So it's been about 20 minutes, our ink charge is now complete, and now your MSN should be prompting you it's time to load the media. So you wanna make sure that the top of the media is faced like this as it'll be fed into the printer. And these bars here on the side have a little slot on each side of the printer to fit this perfectly. So we're just gonna go ahead, place those in. I'm gonna get the media itself. And there's a small silver sort of angled slope smooth plane that we're gonna feed this into and just kind of push forward to the other side of the printer. Easy peasy. The printer is super user friendly. There's only two buttons, power and cut, which is also pause. Additionally over here, we have this orange wheel, which is for loading or advancing the media. And while we're on this side of the printer, I do wanna to touch on the waste tube. You should have a bottle handy as your MSM on your computer will let you know when it's time to empty the waste. Let's have a bottle. And this knob here, when in the upright position, is gonna be locked. If we turn it to the sideways position, the ink will begin to flow waste-wise. Just make sure you pay attention to your MSN as it will let you know when to empty this and have that bottle handy. After we've got the media successfully loaded into the printer at this stage, we're gonna to wanna to lock it in using metal clips. On the left and right hand side of the printer, next to the media, you'll see these small silver clips that slide. I'm just gonna hold the media down tight and then secure that clip over, which will keep it nice and flat, and then do the same thing on this side. The proper layout for your equipment, as you can see here, is gonna be about a foot and a half to two feet from the printer to the loader on the shaker. This is also due to the fact that there's a sensor below down here. When the media reaches a certain length, that sensor will engage and it'll let the rest of the system know to continue to draw. That way we don't get any of our media touching the floor. It's pretty awesome. The next step is to feed the media into the shaker. The orange knob here has a lock and unlock function, which is identified by an arrow. The orange knob arrow, when aiming at the arrow on the printer, is gonna be the lock position. So we're gonna go ahead and unlock this up and now we're gonna feed the media into the shaker. So all you're gonna do is take this here, bring this forward, grab it on the other side, and there's gonna be a metal portion before the conveyor belt starts that has holes. This is where the vacuum suction is gonna create. So we're just gonna place this nice and flat, and I'm gonna advance a little more media out, again, so I do have that slack. I've got where I need it here. I'm just gonna bring a little more roll out from the printer. Not quite touching the floor, but again, just so we can engage that sensor that we spoke about. After you have enough tension, media release, not touching the floor, and we've made contact with the vacuum portion, we're gonna go ahead and hit the fan and the volume's gonna go up a little bit. So now that we've got the media fed to the end of the conveyor dryer, it's time to attach the take-up reel. One of the benefits of this system is gonna be basically autopilot, continuous feeding. And with the roll, it's gonna make sure none of our media gets on the floor. All you're gonna need is a two inch media core. So for easiest loading, you're gonna use this right hand side. You'll see some white kind of pieces that are not on the left. We're gonna go ahead and load this on. After you've got that securely mounted to the end, this holder slides. So we're gonna bring that into the core, get it nice and secure. Now to make sure that we have tension maintained throughout the printing, shaking and drying, all we're gonna do is with a little piece of tape, go ahead and secure this onto the core like so. Now that we've got our media, from the printer, fed into the shaker. The next thing we wanna to wanna to take a look at is the uh, powder station. We're just gonna go ahead and open this up here. And you wanna make sure on the size of this powder station, you're up at about half height. You wanna maintain that we always have enough powder in here. The on-screen control board here is very user-friendly. The settings are coming from manufacturer and we've done rounds and rounds of testing to confirm these are what you wanna use. And if you do run into trouble, you can always reach out to us. As we proceed to this part of the installation and setup, all we're really gonna do now is on the top left of the screen, we're gonna go ahead and switch that from manual to auto. That's gonna kick on everything. The conveyor, the heat, it's gonna begin to pull the media, it's gonna drop the powder and begin to agitate the shaking.
That's essentially going to be our basic installation start to finish from printer to the end of the take up reel. Now a couple quick tips that you're always going to want to know. This printer should be left on continuously. It'll go into kind of a power save or energy kind of sleep mode, but it's going to continue to circulate that white ink. Now on a regular basis, every day before you start any operation, you want to shake those white ink bags or cartridges. Nothing too violent, just a little bit to agitate the white pigment. And next year, I'll always want to do a nozzle check before you start any job. This is A, going to let you know if all of your colors are firing properly, and B, let you see if there are any clogs that we need to address with the head cleaning. But that's basically a start to finish. Congratulations on your new printer.